Hi friends, I'm back to read chapter 18 of Because of Winn-Dixie. I'm trying to remember what happened. Oh, I remember what happened in the last chapter. Um, so Opal just heard this story, um, the story about litmus and the candy and got the litmus lozenges from Miss Franny. And she is on her way, Opal is on her way to Gloria Dumps um, to see, I don't really know what she's going to do. It didn't tell us. Uh, and maybe you predicted something that's going to happen. I know some of, some of my friends, um, emailed me and predicted what was going to happen in the story and what was going to happen next at Gloria Dump's house. So we'll see if they are right. Chapter 18. When we got to Gloria Dump's, I told her I had two surprises for her. And I asked, which one did she want first, the small one or the big one? The small one, said Gloria. I handed her the litmus lozenge, and she moved it around in her fingers, feeling it. Candy, she said. Yes, ma'am, I told her. It's called a litmus lozenge. Oh, Lord, yes. I remember these candies. My daddy used to eat them. She unwrapped the litmus lozenge and put it in her mouth and nodded her head. Do you like it? Mm-hmm, she nodded her head slowly. It tastes sweet, but it also tastes like people leaving. You mean sad? I asked. Does it taste like sorrow to you? That's right, she said. It tastes sorrowful, but sweet. Now, what's surprise number two? A book, I said. A book? Uh-huh, I said. I'm going to read it out loud to you. It's called Gone with the Wind. Miss Franny says it's a great book. It's about the Civil War. Do you know about the Civil War? I have heard of it mentioned a time or two, Gloria said, nodding and sucking on her litmus lozenge. It's going to take us a long time to read this, I told her. There are 1,037 pages. Woo-wee, said Gloria. She leaned back in her chair and crossed her hands on her stomach. We best get started then. And so I read the first chapter of Gone with the Wind out loud to Gloria Dump. I read it loud enough to keep her ghosts away. And Gloria listened to it good. And when I was done, she said it was the best surprise she had ever had, and she couldn't wait to hear chapter two. That night, I gave the preacher his litmus lozenge right before he kissed me goodnight. What's this, he said. It's some candy that Miss Franny's great-grandfather invented. It's called a litmus lozenge. The preacher unwrapped it and put it in his mouth, and after a minute, he started rubbing his nose and nodding his head. Do you like it? I asked. It's a peculiar peculiar flavor. So that means like an interesting flavor. Root beer, I said. Something else. Strawberry? That too, but there's still something else. It's odd. I could see the preacher getting further and further away. He was hunching his shoulders and lowering his chin and getting ready to pull his head inside his shell. Um, it almost tastes like melancholy, he said. What's that? Sad, said the preacher. He rubbed his nose some more. It makes me think of your mother. When Dixie sniffed at the candy wrapper in the preacher's hand. It, it tastes sad, he said, and sighed. It, it must be a bad batch. No, I told him. I sat up in bed. That's the way it's supposed to taste. Litmus came back from the war and his whole family was dead. His daddy died fighting and his mama and his sisters died from a disease. And the Yankees burned down his, ho his house. And Litmus was very sad. And what he wanted more than anything in the whole world was something sweet. So he built a candy factory and made Litmus lozenges. And he put all the sad he was feeling into the candy. My goodness, said the preacher. When Dixie snuffed the wrapper out of the preacher's hand and started chewing on it. Give me that, I said to Win Dixie. But he wouldn't give it up. I had to reach inside his mouth and pull it out. You can't eat candy wrappers, I told him. The preacher cleared his throat. I thought he was going to say something important. Maybe tell me another thing he remembered about my mama. But what he said was, Opal, I had a talk with Mrs. Dewberry the other day. She said that Stevie says that you called him a bald-headed bald -headed baby. It's true, I said. I did, but he calls Gloria Dump a witch all the time. And he calls Otis, he calls Otis stupid. And once he, sa he even said that to his mama, said I shouldn't spend all my time with old ladies. That's what he said. 
I think you should apologize. Me? I said. Yes, he said. You, you tell Stevie you're sorry if you said anything that hurts feelings. I'm sure he just wants to be your friend. I don't think so, I told him. I don't think he wants to be my friend at all. Some people have a strange way of going about making friends, he said. You apologize. Yes, sir, I said. Then I remembered Carson. Daddy, I said, do you know anything about Amanda Wilkinson? What kind of thing? Do you know something about her and somebody named Carson? Carson was her brother. He drowned last year. He's dead? Yes, said the preacher. His family is still suffering a great deal. How old was he? Five, said the preacher. He was only five years old. Daddy, I said, how can you not tell me something like this? Other people's strategy... Other people's, tra other people's tragedies should not be the subject of, of conversation. There is no reason for me to tell you. It's just that I needed to know, I said, because it helps explain Amanda. No wonder she's so pinch-faced. What's that, said the preacher. Nothing, I said. Good night, India Opal, the preacher said. He leaned over and kissed me, and I smelled the root beer and strawberry and the sadness all mixed together in his breath. He patted Win dixie on the head and got up and turned off the light and closed the door. I didn't go to sleep right away. I lay there and thought of how life was like a litmus lozenge, how the sweet and the sad were all mixed up together, and how hard it was to separate them out. It was confusing. Daddy, I shouted. After a minute, he opened the door and raised his eyebrows at me. What was the word you said? The word that meant sad? Melancholy, he said. I liked the way it sounded, like there was a music hidden somewhere in it. Good night now, the preacher said. Good night, I told him back. I got up out of the bed and unwrapped a litmus lozenge and sucked on it hard and thought about Mama leaving me. That was a sad feeling. And then I thought about Amanda and Carson, and that made me feel sad too. Poor Amanda and poor Carson. He was the same age as Sweetie Pie, but he would never get to have his sixth birthday. All right, chapter 18. That was a really sad chapter, uh, in my opinion. Um, and I want to ask you, what do you think, even though it was a really, really sad chapter, what do you think Opal learned from this chapter? Learned about hearing all of the stories, um, learned from having to say sorry to the boys. Um, what do you think she learned? Comment below or comment on Google Classroom. All right, have a great day, everyone.